Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. In today's video, we're gonna be tying up a cheap squirmy worm jig. We're gonna be using a regular jig head. We're gonna be using a 16th ounce real light jig head like you'd use for crappie and panfish. We're gonna be using a squirmy worm and we're also gonna be using some of that budget yarn that we purchased. So let's get to the video. Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. In today's video, what we're gonna be using is we're gonna be using a black squirmy worm. We're gonna be using our black thread, and it's the same thread that we've been using in the last couple of videos. As you can see, this is the Ultra 210. And also on the yarn, guys, what we've done is we've taken one strand. There's normally in a, in a normally in the yarn, you're gonna have several pieces that are twisted together to make up the thickness of the yarn. So what we did is we untwisted all that to get down to one small thread. All right, now if you guys are unfamiliar with the squirmy worm, there's something in the squirmy worm, I guess because it's made out of silicone, that it does not do well with epoxy or that hard as nails that you guys know I like to use. So skip that part. If you do, and I'll show you a real quick clip while I'm just kind of threading this on what's going to happen if you, if you end up using any of that stuff. So again, guys, like I said, I didn't think anything about it. And I was like, that's nonsense. And I went out and opened up my tackle box. And this is what I found. The one on the left actually had the Sally Hansen, the one dead center in the screen, which is the one on the right. I'd put epoxy on it. And as you can see, both of those have fallen apart, including the one that was on the rod that I'd left on there from when I was fishing with it. So basically, if you're gonna do that, you've got 24 hours to fish is the best I can tell you. Cause it, right, I'm telling you, it was like the day after everything was all demolished. It just, it eat it up. As you guys remembered, we tied this shepherd hook, the one, the one we're calling the shepherd. And it's got Sally Hansen's on it as well. And they're saying that this material is so sensitive don't even keep them in the same tackle box. That I couldn't attest to or not. I'm just telling you, I know I put epoxy and Sally Hansen's on the two others. So that's just something to be aware of. And then also, like I say, you might even carry them in a separate little tiny tackle box like this one here. So for starters, if you guys are wanting to add any of the black flash or any of that, and again, that's you can keep this cheap by skipping this step. I just like to add a little bit of the black flash just because it gives just a little bit more something to attract the fish. But you want that laid underneath the squirmy worm. You can, you just hardly cannot tie any flash on the squirmy worm itself because it's such a soft silicone. And I'm gonna show you real quick, we're gonna do this a couple of ways, but we're just gonna start right here. And this stuff is not super easy to work with and you've got to be really careful or you'll cut right through that squirmy worm material. So I mean these are extremely loose wraps guys. All we're trying to do is get it to kind of stay there for a minute. And that right there is about right. Good lord. Oh, there we go. Okay, sorry, I had that string wrapped around the hook. What we're, what we're going to do with ours is we're just going to go ahead and come up here. And we're going to tie this in right up here. And we've got that stretched out pretty good, but it's laying flat. So we're going to go ahead and cut that right there. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tie in another little piece of this tail. And on these smaller jigs like this, you can actually get, you can get, you can get about three worms out of it. So again, stretch that. Just all we're trying to do is build this up to where it's about the same thickness as that jig head is. And then we're going to cut that. So far, so good. And here's where it gets real fun. Again, we're just using something extremely cheap that we got out of the little Walmart buggy bin. We're going to tie that in and then we're going to run our thread all the way back up to the head. 
And then from here, guys, it's just a matter of wrapping this so that we get a nice body. Again, this is that yarn that I have dissected down and pulled one thread out of it. it. I think it was comprised of like three or four wraps to get the total thickness of the yarn. If you'll notice, this is also, I've kind of untwisted it so that it's laying flatter than it would be if it was still round and twisted. So we're just gonna run that back up here. And basically, we're just kind of shooting for a real smooth transition. We do have that little knot that would hold your... Now we're just going to tie that off. Get our whip finishing tool. We're going to pull this back so we don't tie it up. Get our whip finishing tool. And again, guys, do two or three of the whip finishes because you're not going to want to put any kind of Sally Hansen's or that UV epoxy or anything on this thing because it will eat it up. All right, guys, that's it. Now what we're going to do and what I did on the first one that I showed you, this kind of little top knot, is just kind of pull it down and then cut it to length, whatever you want, lengthwise. And that just gives you a little more action because actually when you're fishing this thing, your string's gonna be holding it and it's gonna be upside down like that. It's gonna be running through the water about like that. Again, if you don't like that, cut it off. I just feel like it's giving it a little bit more action. So now that we've got it tied up and we've got basically our split tail gummy worm ready to go, let's go fish with it guys and see what happens.
Just going to show you a couple of quick variations of this same fly. This one's got the worm hanging off the front and the back. This one, we basically, we've got a double tail and then we've got a little bit of a top knot made out of the yarn and all we did on that one is brush it out and that's the one we're going to be working with today. And then I also added in a tiny bit of the black flash. Again guys, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. We appreciate the likes, comments, and if you don't mind and you've got a buddy that's trying to learn how to tie some new lures, share this video with them. We are no experts. We're just people who have a passion for fishing. And if we can save some money and make our own jigs, that's what this whole thing is all about. Again, I love supporting the local fly shops, but I also understand that sometimes people can't afford that. And if we can come up with some other options, like just using some yarn for some of our jigs, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to try to teach you guys how you can do it affordably as well. If you notice this jig head here is unpainted. Guys, you could do a couple of things on that. You could use a paint marker. You could leave it alone. You could put some eyes on it if you, if you wanted to. I mean, they sell some real cheap like stickers that are essentially eyes. I mean, there's a lot of different things you could do to this jig to kind of dress it up make it look a little prettier but to be honest with you just a simple lead head like that i still believe we're going to catch some fish with it so let's go fishing guys and see what happens again if you like our video give us a big thumbs up we appreciate your likes comments and subscribes if you do subscribe hit the bell so you don't miss out on what we're doing next week and until next week feel free to check out one of our playlists i hope that you enjoy fishing deep east texas and guys at the end of the day, I hope you all have a blessed week and let's get outside and make something happen.